just God, it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so pace Brush pain, that thing's hate me, Damon's. Life ain't gotta be hard, just keep it basic. Welcome back to Fort Me Declassified. I'm Glory Ann Martin from. Oh my gosh. You're Glory Ann Martin from the Fort Me Public Affairs Office. Yeah, and I pretty mispronounced my own last name. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep it like that, girl. And that's an easy last name. It is. Keep it, keep All right. It. Welcome back to Fort Meade Declassified. I'm Glory Ann Martin from the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office here with Chad Jones. Uh, and today we have with us Fort Meade Police Chief Dwayne Alvarez. Dwayne. Oh. <laughs> what? Keep it going. Keep, keep going. going. Keep, keep it going. going. Juan Alvarez. <laughs> yeah, Juan you were Alvarez. close. You were close. <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't even know where you got Dwayne from. I don't know either. <laughs> There's not a W in there. Do you want me to start over? Uh, I mean, for your editing yeah. purposes? It's for your... Uh, I think it would be... <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, yeah. you're either mispronouncing your name... I'm or just going to mispronounce this whole thing. One of those if, two. If you can't pronounce your name, I, yeah. I mean, I don't think he'd take offense. You can't I, I'll, I'll point. You can already <laughs> mess your name up right in front of all four of us. So, yeah, just stick with it. You know, one of my friends said he was going to find my podcast episode and listen to it, and I told him, well, you won't ever find out the name of it. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you would find out about it. Um, okay, well, we're here today with the Fort Meade Police Chief to talk about National Night Out happening in the Fort Meade community on August 1st. Thank you so much for joining us today, Chief Albert. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure. I was, real, I, I was a little excited to attend this. I don't even know why, but I was just, and this was really not my thing, you know, speaking out in public. But you were here just, early. Yeah, I, I, that's how excited I was. You're here, <laughs> ready to go. I was excited, so here we are. So National Night Out, we've been doing this a long time, but we have not done it like almost five this. years. And it's almost been, it's been almost close to five years now since the last one. I mean, we had one plan 2018. I was still in the army wearing uniform, yep. and we had the rainstorm come through. And yep, I remember yeah. that. Lightning strike, the helicopter come in, that was awesome. Yeah. So yeah, this uh, this year is uh, going to be very scaled down. Uh, it's, uh, there were a lot of different pieces uh, that caused this to play out this way, uh, just because we couldn't get all the outside agencies uh, to join in with ours. You know, um, again, they're hosting there. This is a national thing, you know, a national night out. Uh, so I guess being at Fort Meade hasn't had one in over the five years, something that they have been a part of previously, I guess they just decided, you know, uh, we're going to do our own this year. So Yeah, so it doesn't seem like it's, I mean, scaled down, yes, it's not going to be on the parade for everything else, but it seems like the intent is a little bit different so that it can actually be more community-focused as opposed to installation-wide focused. Yes, yeah, it, it, it is, um, and again, but the goal is to, it, it's still the same, uh, to get out, uh, get with the community, uh, get them the understanding, you know, get the understanding to, out to them that, you know, we want your help, uh, we want your support, uh, we want to communicate with you, uh, you know, we, we're looking for this whole crime prevention to happen from their side and from our side, you know. Uh, you know, the Army has a saying, uh, you see something, you say something. Uh, so, you know, if we can get out and reach to the community, you know, of all ages, and hopefully it's a, provide that uh, better intel and make life easier for law enforcement. You know? And is that, been on Fort Mate for a minute, you know, our crime is fairly subdued. We're, we're a, statistically speaking, a fairly safe well, we're a very safe neighborhood, I would guess, statistically speaking. So, is that information, why is that interaction with the community as important in a place like this as it might be in, in other communities that are not generally as safe? Because it's complacency, you know. Um, you know, we don't, you're right, we, we don't have much crime, you know, with domestics, uh, knock on wood, uh, you know, shootings, whatever, drugs, um, with speeding, uh, just 
large number of traffic violations across the board, uh, but I think the biggest thing is to get people to understand that uh, don't be complacent. Uh, you know, those little things that you do see, and you can't speak on them, um, make, it, make, make it known, you know, that you observe something. Uh, again, it goes back to you see something, you say something. Uh, allow us to do our jobs, allow us to police, you know, uh, the installation and do the right thing. It's not that we're out fishing for crime. We want to, that's not the case, but we want people to understand that we are here, uh, you know, assist, protect, and defend, you know. Um, we, we want to make sure Fort Meade is clean across the board. You know, we don't want things be hit, to be hidden from us. Um, it's, it's a partnership, you know. It, it's a partnership across the board. All right, so when you're talking I guess to go back a little bit about August 1st, but the different scope or type of the event. So instead of doing it on the parade field, it's what it, what is National Night Out on Fort Meade going to look like this year? Um, so the, the concept obviously has changed. Uh, but what we're doing is uh, we're kind of splitting the base in half, and we're going to have two different sites, uh, two community centers, uh, one being uh, Heritage Park and the other being Midway Common. Uh, as far as the events that we're going to have there for everybody to attend, you know, the little handouts, it's all going to be the same. You know, we're going to have officers, uh, police cars, you know, uh, just showing what the Fort Meade Police Department has to offer to the community. You know, we're going to have the canine dogs out there. Uh, we're going to have our traffic investigators out, you know, with a a lane set up, you know, giving people an understanding of how it is to be drunk but through goggles, you know. Um, we're going to have uh, our investigations uh, department out there uh, doing fingerprinting kits for the kids, for the families. Um, and I also have uh, the fire department coming out, you know, for the fire truck. Every kid loves yeah. a fire truck, you know. It's, yeah, it's all you, you know, like You can admit it, police officers don't like it that every kid want, likes fire trucks. <laughs> well, I mean... Fire trucks are cooler. They're not, but <laughs> <laughs> they're a little cooler. They have ladders. The look, yes, um, <laughs> the ladder, it's there, but you don't get to play on it. Uh, you right. know, the police department, right? You get to see the dogs. That's you know, true. Dogs you get are to good. see the capabilities of that canine. You know, the handler. Yep. Uh, you get to sit in a patrol car. You know, you you You're gonna let people to, like hit the siren and yeah, we're gonna let them do it all. You know. Um, we actually also we're also going to kind of like parade through the neighborhoods probably uh, two hours prior, you know, to give out an extra notification. You know, there'll be a couple of patrol vehicles along with the fire truck. Um, yeah, so it, it may not seem uh, as a huge event as it was in the past, but we're going to try our best to uh, make it that way. You know, sometimes it, it's not about uh, the big flashiness of something, you know. Um, it's about a, the effort that we're going to put into it, you know, and uh, I well, think that we're going to put a big effort into it. It sounds like it's, I mean, again, if the intent is to get people to know their communities. I know there was a lot of, you know, neighbors knowing neighbors is a big part of it, too. Yes. And that's easier to do with a community focus. Than yeah, a huge gathering, you know. Yeah. What's, what's better than you giving out free handouts, you know, little snack foods for the kids? I there mean, you go. I, I wish we could do, uh, you know, Chick-fil-A, hamburgers, <laughs> hot dogs. You know, you definitely would get people to attend, you know. Uh, Chief, you should talk them. to your public affairs office about helping you do that next year. We, oh. we know how to get free food. You guys love free food? You get free food? We you know how to get free food. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. What kind of outside organizations are going to be there? Uh, well, so again, uh, this year we, we won't have any outside okay. agencies. Uh, typically, you know, we would have our neighboring law enforcement agencies uh, play a part with us, uh, but we won't have any this year just due to the fact uh, other large agencies are hosting their own national night out event, you know, so. Um, but hopefully, you know, in the near future, this is going to return back to the status of you know, huge Fort Meade National Night Out event that it was previously. So. Why did we 
decide to keep it on Courtney? Why didn't Courtney go to some other agency's national night out? What was was it important to keep it um, on the yeah. installation? I, I think it was it, it was uh, is very important for us to maintain it here on the installation uh, because even if we were to join, say, with Anne Arundel County, uh, that's not a guarantee that our community is going to come out, you know, and see and receive all the information that National Night actually, you know, gives out to the, the community, you know, to, uh, to the public. Uh, and I think that by hosting it here on Fort Meade, you know, solely for the Fort Meade community, it gives everybody that resides here uh, an opportunity to come out and, uh, you know, mingle with their neighbors, uh, speak to their law enforcement partners, and, uh, and yeah, th th that's it. You know, I, I think it's a great opportunity for the community. Um, I think we're making the right decision by continuing to, to host it and not prolong it for another year, you know. So I look at it as uh, we're starting small and then increase to something bigger, you know, in the near future. Why did we stop? You said the last one was 2018? Um, I, to be honest, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, other than when I was in the service, uh, still serving uh, as a provost sergeant. Uh, no, 2018, it was a huge event, but due to the weather, it was called off. But pr after that, I think we could blame it like on everything else. COVID, you know, uh, was a big push to not have it as well, you know, so. So as you go through, and you're talking about, I mean, we got our chief of police here, so I might as well ask some police questions. <laughs> you, ma you mentioned a little bit about traffic. Um, what what are some of the what are some of the issues or some of the areas that, that you're noticing now? We're summer. We've got new, you know, we're in the middle of our PCS season. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're in the peak. So if somebody is listening to this for the first time learning about Fort Meade and what the situations are at or some of the areas, at least from a crime perspective or a crime prevention perspective, what, what should they know? Um, well, from the traffic perspective, I would, have to, I would have to tell them, be cognizant of, it's not school time now, uh, but the speed going from 35 or 25 to 35 within the school zone. Uh, a lot of times, uh, even though we have officers sitting out there, we still have people thinking that the speed limit during school zone time is yeah. increasing. But it's not, you know, if the flashing lights are on, uh, going uh, north and south, uh, it's an indicator to you that the speed limit is 25 and not 35. Right. You know, uh, so that's a, that, that's a high visible area for uh, traffic, traffic violations for speeding. Um, another one, I would have to say, just crashes uh, would probably be uh, Mapeson 32 area, the gate, the traffic circle, trying to get back on the highway, um, and obviously 175, you know, we get a lot of violations, but that's a combination of military and, you know, DOD civilians and people that have no affiliation with Right. Because with, uh, that's me. still our road, right? Yeah. To a certain extent... Uh, from the gate to the side, and then from uh, Disney Road all the way down to uh, the turn for 32. So that's all the way, uh, we can say all the way to the uh, the gas station on the other side of the traffic light on 32, uh, mm -hmm. exiting to 32. Uh, what is it, the sunshine, sunrise? Yeah. yeah. Well, that whole area by the NSA, that's like one of the most... Seems like one of the most patrolled areas ever on Thursday. Yeah, because you, you have like every type of police. Yeah, you have NSA, you have us, and you have state, uh, yeah. no, state police out there as well. So. so you mentioned that, and I did want to get, because we mentioned that this year we're not having as many community partners because other, you know, it's a national night out, so other communities are doing it. But that by no means doesn't mean that we have agreements and partnerships with other local police departments. No, right. no, we, we don't. Uh, this is normally, uh, if we do have outside agencies, this, you know, it's uh, 
partnership you just yeah. reaching out not not for this event but as a whole like we work with Anne Arundel County Police on different things yes law we do enforcement yep. things of that nature we do just uh, again back to uh, this year is just they're hosting their own yeah. uh, Laurel Bowie uh, Maryland State they're part of something else you know so I mean we, we normally have a lot of uh, huge uh, agencies out but but we work with them like with the schools and other law enforcement yes, type stuff. I mean, we're, we're locked in pretty tight with them. Yeah. Um, I would have to say, previously, uh, relationship was just not there due to the fact of communication. Um, I think we're getting better. I mean, you, you've been a part of the, the yeah. school meetings. I, I think we're getting better. Um, with the uh, the communication between Fort Meade Police, school resources officers, uh, Anne Arundel County police officers that are in, and also uh, the school board security officers that's there. Uh, I think uh, Miss uh, McCollins. Uh, okay. Oh, Mayor, our school liaison. Officer. School liaison. Mayor She's yep. done a phenomenal job with uh, ensuring that we stay in contact with the school resource officers. You know. Uh, the principal, the assistant principal. So uh, she's always emailing us, or not now, because they're in the school, but right, she got here, I think, uh, maybe the last quarter of school. Yep. Uh, we, for some reason, the last quarter, that's when we begin to have a ton of issues. Or it could be just the fact that between her transitioning in and Ms. Bernice transitioning out, we really didn't get anything, but once she got settled in, we started finding out a lot of information, uh, things that were being done in the schools that were being reported to us. So, yeah, I think she's doing a phenomenal job over there for us, so. You guys have an officer located in one of the community centers, don't you? Yes, um, we do. Uh, uh, Detective Safar, he's our uh, community police officer, uh, which is probably going to change, not, not probably, it's, He's moving to a different position, so it's probably it's going to change here in the near future. Uh, we just haven't appointed anyone yet, uh, but he's moving on to another position right now. And what is that? What is the what does the community police officer do? Uh, so the way we our pl vision plan is a little bit different from normal. Uh, what we're trying to do again is get the community to understand that we want to help. Uh, they may not have a lot of issues, uh, but a lot of the issues that they would post on, uh, let's say, Facebook, mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't get notified of these issues that are occurring within uh, the housing. You know, um, so what we're doing and the thought behind putting our uh, community police officer out there is that they will come out, at least come to the main community center and uh, reach out to him with their concerns, you know. Um, I, I'm assuming a lot of people feel that, you know, their their needs are not being addressed or their concerns aren't being addressed, you know, by the department for whatever reason that may be. So, you know, we're just trying to come up with other means to get them to understand and utilize the resources. Is there going to be anything at the communities? So, like, playgrounds are a pretty big issue just in the communities as a whole, but also um, making sure people are safe in the playground. You know, there, we did yeah. have some talk at town halls about bullying and uh, breaking playground equipment and that right. type of stuff and not knowing how to handle that from a law enforcement perspective. Well, again, it, it goes back to don't be afraid to say something because, you know, it's a kid. I mean, if you can call us and tell us, hey, a kid is being bullied, but if we don't know who the kid is so that we can address it, I mean, Word of advice, if you know who the kid is, it, it may be something parent to parent, have a discussion, because uh, I don't want it to get to the point to where every time a kid is being bullied, the first thing we do is call the police, and it tends to, to be a negative thing, you know? Uh, right. I don't want it to lead to something negative that every time, you know, kids get into some type of scuffle or, you know, verbal disagreement, the police gets called out. Fort Meade police gets called out, and now the kids are terrified to speak to us about the things that are really happening and we should really be addressing. Not that this shouldn't be something that we shouldn't address, but, you know, uh, just the mindset of 
trying to get them to understand that we're here to help, we want to help, but there's things that, you know, as parents, you should be, you know, be more involved. You know, go talk to the other parent of the kid that's bullying the next kid, you know. Um, and if it gets out of hand, then we can get involved. Uh, but I don't see it being that way, you know. It's, it's a how small long, family. How long have you been a cop? Um, well, I've been a chief of, chief of police for a little over 17 months. Um, but I've been a military police for all of my career in the Army, uh, which was a little over 21 years. And do you feel... So you've probably been on different installations, probably done, you know, wartime missions, everything else. But you, I mean, it's pretty obvious or well known, at least, what some perception of cops are in different communities. Do you feel that military police get that perception? So you were talking earlier about kids seeing a cop and then automatically right. being afraid. Do you do you see that as much on a military installation or at all? Um, and I and the I, last I part of that is how does how will an event like National Night Out help that? Um, well, I, we haven't had any complaints as of yet, right? On having officers uh, not being clear with the communi uh, communication to a victim or a subject, or. Um, being disrespectful to anyone. Um, one of my pet peeves is, you know, you treat others the way you want to be treated. Um, and I think it, 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 it's trickling down to my, my officers. Um, but I've seen worse, and I don't think Fort Meade is there. I don't, I don't think we would get there. Uh, I'm not saying that we're perfect. Uh, we, we do make mistakes out there. Um, but the big thing is if, if we're notified of it, we're going to rectify it. We're, we're going to adjust it. Uh, we're going to address the matter um, and move forward. Uh, it's just, uh, it's across the board. We all know what law enforcement is across the board, you know. I'm not going to sit here and say Fort Meade police are better than everybody else, but I don't think that we're uh, in a position as most departments uh, when they're dealing with these type of events. Uh, we haven't had anything firsthand that I know of firsthand unless my guys are hiding and I doubt it because I get to see everything so and hear everything. <laughs> so tell us one more time event, August 1st. August what 1st. We start? Um, we're going to start the event. The event actually starts at each uh, of the two community centers from 1600 to 2100, uh, but we're going to be out probably two hours prior uh, driving around, just giving an extra notification to come out uh, to, the, to the community centers and uh, interact with your law enforcement, you know, come out and meet your neighbors. Uh, so. I think uh, I think it's going to be a good event, you know. Okay. Um, even though it's a little scaled down. Uh, yeah, one more. Well, it sounds like a good community event for everyone to get involved in. Yeah. Uh, who should people contact, or where can they go for more information if they're interested? Um, you can contact the DES, uh, the non-emergency line, which is three zero one six seven seven sixty six twenty two. Um, you can also check uh, our Facebook page. Uh, you'll see some flyers up there. Um, we're going to have some banners all across the installation that people will be notified with. You know, so we're going to get the message out. You don't deserve a little break after red, white, and blue. I mean, you all did a great job. We don't deserve a break. No, you do. Oh. You deserve it. <laughs> you said it's a scaled down event. You guys deserve a little break yeah. after. Um, but you know, it's a. Uh, this for the community, yeah. you know. Um, again, I, I think, you know, this this was something that was started, like, back in 1984 off of just 15 grand. Yeah. 
you know, and uh, this thing just blew up out of nowhere. Just from someone out here, uh, an officer in Philadelphia, you know, started doing small community events and it just blew up from there. So I, I, I think it's a great thing for uh, law enforcement to get out and, uh, you know, do face-to-face -face handshakes and converse with the community. And I think it's a positive thing. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Yeah. We really appreciate it. And so we encourage everyone to attend this year's National Night Out on August 1st, starting at 4 p.m. at Heritage Park and Heritage Midway. Park and Midway Common. And that's at your community centers with their, to engage with your local law enforcement. So thank you, everyone, for listening in today. And we'll see you next time on the next episode of Fort Meade Declassified. Hold up, I got a new myth. Work hard, just God, it's amazing. Life is just a marathon, so basic.